Hey guys, welcome to Raja Makes Money. How are all my money makers doing today? The chicken returns. We got the chicken back. Finally, God, it was a rough three days, and uh, I'm finally well rested. I just, I just want to apologize to everyone yesterday. I, honestly, I, I was so close to time, like I don't even know if I could do a show. I, it wasn't because I, we were down for the week. I was just like so beat. I had just such an amazing time down in. Choctaw at the casino, and I, I I just couldn't lose. I just kept playing nonstop. I was like, when well, you know, when you're on a hot streak and you're a gambler, you know how it is. You just want to go, go, and go. But I, I, I felt so bad yesterday. I mean, I, I was probably about the tiredest I've been in years. I just I was on fumes, but we survived. We made it, and we finally had a good day in the market. We had one day trade that paid off pretty well. Um, you know, like, and uh, and I, I'm still looking out to do another day trade today or what we want to do uh, and, and stuff. Also, guys, I just shared the link. Um, the Weeble Challenge has ended or will end today uh, in, in, in probably like an hour and a half when the uh, extended hour market closes. So uh, that's the link. Everybody who participated, um, if, if you lost, I, I definitely know some people have made money. So if you lost money, you still send it in, but we have our, we have our plaques. So uh, for the Weeble Challenge that you guys have been doing right here. So uh, we're going to first, second, third place. So make sure you need to submit your uh, how you finished up by Sunday. We're going to get them all sorted out and, and, and everything. And then uh, we're on the road Monday and Tuesday. So we'll probably do the winner when we're back Wednesday in the office. Um, we'll announce the winner in the Weeble Challenge. But hurry up, guys. Take your advantage of it. Make sure this weekend you get submitted to us how you did. But let's talk about the markets today. Wow. Another crazy day in the markets. Um you know, uh, unusual. <laughs> the markets were way, way in the red. Um, 469 points. Uh, the Nasdaq actually was up. It was up a lot more, but the Dow and the Dow was okay, and then fell apart at the end. Um, but we we come back today. Had a, had a good day, almost back to 6.3 million. So for the week, we're down about six uh, 640 thousand dollars. This is our first down week in a long time, but. Um, you know, you're, you're not going to win them all. We're not going to win them all, but I think we'll do okay. We'll keep it going. We got the research team going strong. Kenny had some great picks today, if you guys saw, uh, and, and some stuff. One of them I took advantage of and did. But yeah, let's just look at it. So, uh, and a couple of things, and I also did a hedge I'm going to talk about today. All my Patreon members, thank you guys for being part of our Patreon group. Uh, anybody can join our Patreon group if you guys want to be part of it as well. You just need to go to patreon.com forward slash Raja makes money. And that's where I put, post all my trades in real time. Um, so a couple of things. So CCIV uh, up today. So a nice day there. Uh, you know, I mean, this one keeps going up. Uh, I wrote the $40 calls to open against the position. And I will explain this in a little bit here and what, why I did that and how that all works. Uh, IDEX pretty much flat. This, this is the one here we're in the, you know, I mean, we're, so we're only actually in the hole because, you know, we sold them originally for 50 cents. So it's not as bad as this, but yeah, I mean, I'd like to see this back to four bucks or so. It'd be nice. Uh, this SVAC starboard, uh, another SPAC over that thing gets moving back up a little Jaguar. I don't know what's going on with this thing. This thing is just a really, uh, I'm, I'm afraid to average down more. I mean, I should probably, I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to make some moves with this coming up. Uh, CTYX in the green today, still down a little bit from our highs. But this one, uh, you know, Kenny posted the charts looking really solid on it. So you want to make sure you check that out. Um, NWBO up a little bit today. And, and this is good when, you know, when the, when the overall markets sell off, a lot of this stuff gets hit hard. Um, some of these uh, OTC stocks got hit pretty hard today because the SEC – is talking about filing a loss or shut 15 more stocks down. And we're going to talk more about that on Sunday show and what the risks are and some different stuff. Um, AABB, uh, I still like this one a lot. It came back some today, no, no, nothing too special, but we have a lot of it. Hopefully it starts coming back. Um, you know, not a whole lot. Uh, Nate, uh, Naked, I was surprised Naked hasn't done better for us. You know, I averaged down on this one. This one um, started going and definitely has some legs on it. But last time it came in this like 90 cent dollar range then took off again. So hopefully we'll get some news. Uh, Bantech, we have a lot of stock on that. We made a lot of money on that one. Unfortunately, these other shares are still down, but good thing we sold some of it. Uh, Sun Hydrogen, um, I think I bought. I mean, I bought, one of them I bought, or no, I didn't buy any more today. This one, this one we averaged down a little bit. So this is another one I think uh, should come back, has some good potential in it. Um, our mining stock today was down a little bit. 
uh, not a lot of volume. DSGT, this is one that we're expecting some good news here on uh, pretty soon. Dark polls, live clips. So this is a new one today we did, live clips. So we're up a little bit. It was actually higher. At one point, it got to um, 1.3, so it was actually pretty good. Um, so you definitely want to take a look at that. Uh, oh, hold on a second. $2 super chat from Sanders Slots Beyond Meat had a huge deal with McDonald's. Nice. Take a, we can take a look at that stock here in a little bit. Um, but uh, I, I've got Tony, I got the research team, and you know, obviously headed up, uh, and I put Kenny with his task. Uh, in our is, I want him to look into all these OTC stocks, so we know what what we should do with some of them. Average down, make the right moves. Uh, FRX, uh, this is the one we averaged down the other day, so now that's starting to pay off. You know, this one, if this stock comes up, you know, a point or two, which I think it has really good possibility to do pretty quickly, we'll actually have a profit to get out of that one. Um, so like I said, nothing nothing too crazy uh, there. CCIV, I was going to buy some more on the close, and then it was up, which is good. And I'll, I'll explain some more here. And I've been watching, and it was down a little bit, I thought about it, because it, it seems like Mondays it always pops. We have, I mean, we still have, we have 60,000 shares of it. You know, it pops 10 points, Monday, I'd, I'd be in heaven. Uh, be 600 grand, be back to $7 million in the account. But I, I don't know, it's, it's it's hard to say. I know it has a lot of support at that $28 level, and I, and I like playing those bounces. I, I hate for this thing to come down, you know, two, three points again, you know, because then we would lose $180,000 in account value. Um, um, but if it goes, if it comes down and we buy 20, 40, 30, 40, <coughs> 20, 30, 40,000 more shares of it, and then it comes back three points, we make 120 grand. It's going to be in this range. I have a feeling CCIB, it's either going to take off and go, or it's going to be in this 28 to 33, $35 range, is my guess. So I, I just, and I also don't want to sell it. I don't want to sell it too soon. You know, I, I mean, we have 60,000 shares. I can sell it right now, but, uh, you know, if you can cash it at the right time. So I'm watching it. I'm, I'm playing with it. But I did a hedge today. I'm going to explain all that to you guys in a little bit. Uh, also, while we're here really quick on the screen, BYND, let's take a look at Beyond Meats. And uh, they had a nice day uh, after hours. Nothing, nothing too huge. But, yeah, that's, that's definitely going to be a good deal for them. I think one thing with them, I, I haven't looked at them in a while. Um, I don't think they're profitable. Um, yeah. That, that's the issue with Beyond Meats, because um, I was I was watching and their revenues soaring, and their, everything looks really really good, but they're uh, they're not making any money, which I I also don't understand why if their you know business is so good. Uh, like I said, I, I haven't studied this one in a long time. It's you know way off its uh, highs. If we look at the six month chart, you see it's it's been way up there you know a few times and kind of bounced around. So it's kind of like in the mid level now from where it's been. Hard to say on that one, but uh, thank you, Sandra Slots, for sharing that with us. Uh, but okay, so let's go back to the trades we made today. So, uh, alternate systems, I averaged down, I got 100,000 more shares on this one at uh, 7.5 cents. It closed at 7.4. So, basically, right about where we bought it. This one, uh, we're going to make our money off of this one. We're, <laughs> we're down a lot on it. Um, you know, I, I think they have a lot of possibilities with the electric uh, motorcycle and stuff. But uh, it, it just hasn't performed well. I mean, we're, we're down $59,000 on this one. But, you know, last week, remember, this thing popped and all of a sudden it was 12 cents. So I definitely see some possibilities here. And, uh, you know, if this thing pops, you know, to 15 cents now, we're, we can get out and get our money where, you know, originally we got into it at 19. So these you just have to, we're just going to have to sit on the sideline and wait a little bit. And, um, you know, this is going to come to us. So uh, about that, uh, CCIV. So this is disappointing. So this morning, uh, I had a limit order in at 32 bucks. We only got filled on 7,000 uh, or 6,783 shares at $32 um, pre-market. So I don't know why. And then, of course, once the stock opened, it was higher. But unless you re-put your order and you don't get filled. So then I just went ahead and whacked the rest of them at 29 uh, 30. And then I also put in an order to buy again at 2850. So basically these are the ones we bought yesterday around 28 bucks. Um, so we did really good with them. I mean, this made us, uh, on 6,000 shares at four bucks, it's about 24 grand and on another 13,000 shares, a dollar 30. So another, you know, $15,000 or so. So, um, you know, overall is a good trade about 35, 40,000 in profit from this trade. So we're, we're getting it nickel by nickel. We're going to make a lot of money and get it all back. Uh, Life Clips, I got the 900,000 shares at 0.09. Uh, it actually then fell a little bit. So I tried to, uh, or actually I, I bought at, uh, excuse me, that didn't get done. I, I got, hold on a second here. Life Clips. 
That's weird. Showing cancel. Oh, he's like, um, hold on a second. Well, we bought 900,000 shares sometime today. I tried to sell some that we bought. This is a buy that didn't get filled. Well, I wonder where the uh, open orders with fills. I don't know why it's not showing up there. That's, that's weird. Life clip LC. TLP. I don't know why it's not. Uh, there it is. All right. So we bought at 0 0.014. It came down uh, like around that 0 0.09. I tried to get some more. Then, of course, it ran. So I didn't get it. Um, but um, this one, like I said, uh, you know, it's, it's a good one. Uh, the research team likes it a lot. And uh, it's, it's going to be good, you know. Uh, all right. So let me show you. Oh, whoops. All right, so this is what I want to share with you. So, um, oh, God, that's my stocks. All securities. There we go. Sorry about that, guys. So I was being finicky. All right, so this is my hedge I was talking about. So now that CCIV has options, and we'll um, pull up here. So I sold the 40 contracts, or on our 60,000 shares we own, I sold 600 contracts for a dollar. Now, this this is a hedge, and let, let me explain. And um so we sold those at a dollar. Let me pull up the um, the chain because I'll, I'll show it to you guys. And what I'm looking at, so we're into our CCIV. Actually, I think we're into it about $45 a share now, $44, $45 with the money that um, we got that we got out of it because we took, um, we, um, we, um, I don't know what the hell we did. No, <laughs> we've been averaging down. So the last couple of days, I've actually done pretty good. You know, yesterday I almost 100. Even though we were down yesterday, I had 120 thousand dollars in those little, you know, extra trades. So we're getting money back. It's just you know we're not we don't have all our stocks fully cooperating with us. Should I say uh, when they all fully cooperate one day, we're going to have a massive day. So let me show you here. So okay, so here's CCIB uh, closed at uh, right right around 33 31 dollars. Excuse me. Um, or $31, $30.75. So these are the different option contracts. Um, do all. So they, they, they bounce around a little bit here. So when, when you own stock, and, I, and I've, I've been explaining this to people, when you own stock, you can sell against it. So you can give some, so I own all these shares of CCIV. So um, I want to average, so I, I want to take some chips off the table. I, I own the stock. I really don't want to sell it at 40 or, you know, I mean, well, actually, honestly, if, I, if we, if, like I said, if we got to 40, I would be very happy next week. Uh, if we had 60,000 shares at $9 uh, up from where it is today, that would be $540,000. It always goes back to 7 million. Um, we'd be basically pretty good. Um, so CCIV started the weekly options yesterday. So to give somebody the right to now buy my 60,000 shares. So I'm basically taking $60,000 off the table in profit because I got a dollar for that. I looked at some different numbers. I looked at the 36. For 50 cents extra, you're leaving four points on the table. If this thing runs you know, above 40 or gets going, this thing could be 40, 45 pretty quickly. Unfortunately, we would be capped at $40. So we're basically getting $41 a share. So you could basically look at if you took the I have six, 60,000 shares of it. I would basically, I'm, I'm basically, if this closes above $40 on Friday next week, I basically make $600,000 next week back um, on this play. So, and I, and I can also roll it down. I can roll it out. And, you know, if this thing, and if this thing closes next week at $31, $30 again, or $30 and 75 cents, I make $60,000 on this play. So I basically gave somebody the opportunity to buy my stock at $40 a share. Um, and I got paid a dollar for that. So basically people buy call, like when you buy a call, it's because you're bullish on something. So people, somebody gave me 60 grand because they think CCIB next week, or they're hoping CCIB will be way above $40. If it's not above $41, they made a bad uh, move by selling me that call. So that's what we're looking at. I looked at some of these different options. I also like to model my, you know, and the other thing is like, let's, let's take for next week, CCIB is at 30, $30, right? So let's look at the two, like the 31, uh, the $32 strike was, you know, like a dollar 25 out of the money is $2 and 60 cents. So this is also nice. Let's say CCIB is, you know, 40 bucks next week. Then we could sell the 40, you know, for the following week for probably two or $3. So this is a good way to get money out of a stock, um, especially to help average down our costs. 
Now the downfall is if it if it does run above 40 and you get called out, you, you don't participate in that upside. So if CCIV takes off and goes uh, all the way up to um, you know 50 bucks again, we lose out on six hundred thousand dollar or you know uh, you know five hundred forty thousand because we're not going to because we're basically getting paid forty one dollars a share. I am personally very happy at forty one dollars a share. The other thing I like and I'm looking at is, you know, we're flipping the stock, but this also is another one. I, I know the stock is in this range of this, you know, 30, you know, where it's sitting here. You know, so another thing to look at is next week and the volatility of it. If this thing dips, it may be something where I just buy the, you know, buy, you know, 40,000 shares and then just immediately sell those 40,000 shares for like, uh, you know, a basic example would be if the stock's 30, 50, you know, a quarter off, I could, let's say I buy 40,000 shares, I can immediately sell the call for let's say around three bucks, I'm basically making on 40,000 shares, I make $120,000 to stock. And I'm just gonna bet that hopefully the stock's above that strike price on Friday. If the stock's below it, I keep the stock and I can keep doing that move just like we're doing. So that's not really a hedge, that's more of kind of a building in profit. But the downfall to all this is if the stock's 20, if we can keep buying at 28 and flipping it at you know, 30, 31 for a dollar or two every time, we're gonna make more money short term doing that every day of the week than we would doing this. So it's just some different plays. If, if you're not as bullish or uh, you don't want to be busy all week flipping stock, this is a good move. Also, just like a regular, just like puts and, and calls and puts, every day those premiums come down in price. So basically what that means is you have a premium, like for example, the, the, for, the $40 we sold for a dollar. On Monday, even if the stock is up, two dollars more than unless the volatility gets really crazy um even though the stock's up two dollars that is probably going to stay at a dollar every day this week that this stock is two or three points away from forty dollars that option contract will probably come down about 20 cents so we'll start making money every single day i mean like i said honestly the option contract went to two dollars because the stock's at 37 that, that's like i said I personally would love to get called out at $40 a share next week. Um, that would be a, a gift. But if not, at least I've got $60,000 more towards, you know, that bad trade we made uh, to help average us down. So that, that's why you do these calls. So, and it doesn't even matter like on this stock. And this is what we've also talked about, like with, for example, um, IDEX. The problem is the premiums are so bad because it's such a low, it's such a low uh, price stock. So the premiums are not very um, are not very good on it right now with the stocks so down. So I would either have to uh, blast it for a huge loss, which I'm not really ready to do, or go farther out. So IDX, it makes more sense not to really do anything because, as you can see here, we own we own the stock. Well, I mean, I guess we could look at this. Oh, that's thing. There are also IDX is uh, three weeks out. So for th you know we're, we're into the stock basically at four fifty. I could pick up. 30, uh, at, you know, 18 cents, I pick up, you know, $30,000 and that takes our price of the stock down to $4 and 30 cents. But the downfall is if the stock um, doesn't, if the stock doesn't come back and we keep the stock, this is great. I, I make an extra, you know, I mean, I, I might as well sell the $4 one for a quarter. And I've looked at that one too and said, you know, I, I can sell that. I, I pick up about $40,000, gets my price down to about four and a quarter. I'd still have a little loss. And the stock, you know, is sitting at, um, I, th I think what 310 three, you know it's it's bounced around you know but this is another one that this thing uh, one given day could you know it could be four dollars tomorrow re really quickly it could be five dollars again really quickly with the right news so i, I don't want to i'd rather wait a little bit because if, like i said if this thing comes back i'd rather just i can make a lot of money and get out of it i don't want to or you know the other thing is, is what's happened too is let's say it ran let's say we sold these the four dollar one for a quarter this thing runs to five bucks then, then you have to buy these back for 75 cents. It all about equals out the same. But I've seen stocks too. They run, all of a sudden they run right back down and, you know, you, 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 know, you can't get out of them. So to wait three weeks is a long period. Uh, that's why the CCIB with the weekly options now looks really, really good. So um, th that's my uh, explaining on that. Sorry, I wasn't showing you the, the screen the whole time. I'm talking, <laughs> but that's my explaining on that. So here's the CCI, I mean, the IDEX screen. Um, so... That this is what you know. I was just explaining, but um, like I said, I, I think CCIV makes the most sense. Uh, it, it looks pretty good. I, I you know, like I said I'm, I'm so tempted because Mondays, every Monday this thing seems to pop, and we also have seen it pop two days in a row above 32 bucks. So I'm tempted to buy 20,000 shares of it. 
thing pops a dollar, we make another 20 grand, you know, towards our money. The downfall is if the thing, you know, opens up down a dollar or two, all of a sudden now we're, you know, with our 60,000 shares plus another 20, 80, you know, we're down 160 grand for the day. So I'm going, I'm going to, I'm going to watch this pre-market Monday. Um, if it, like I said, if it, if it, if it's down, I'm definitely a buyer. If, if I see this thing around 28, $29, I'm going to buy 20,000 more shares and we'll, we'll get a nice little pop out of it. If it's up, um, I'll probably just kind of let it, let it be for a little while. So, um, but, uh, oh, well, thank you, Satoshi. Raja, you're doing great. Historically, February is always a down month. Well, thank you, Satoshi. I appreciate that. And, um, you know, I, I try and give it my best for you guys. Uh, Scott, look into NBR quick. NBR. NBR, sure. Neighbors in ooh, 52 week high today, up four points. Very low volume. Neighbors Industries. So look at the chart on this. Also, guys, make sure to in our Patreon group. These are all great stuff to share with uh, Kenny, so you can have the research team take a look at it. Oh, let's see. Neighbors and owns and operates a land-based drilling rig fleet. The company is proud of offshore platform drilling rigs in the United States. Nice. I uh, do not know why it's up. According to this, it loses money. So. Um, don't have any info and when you guys do post info if you guys do know stuff about it or what what we're looking at let me know so uh we don't have to guess <laughs> sometimes all right let's see here all right doug a says look at fsr This one had a good day, up 32%. Wow. Fisker Incorporated. This one is profitable. <laughs> a huge PE. Reminds me, we're looking at uh, the uh, Tesla PE at 1400. As an automotive company, the company designs and manufactures electric vehicles. We also provide mobility solutions, Fisker Ocean Electric Sport Utility Vehicles. Nice. Definitely a good one. I think we've heard this one mentioned a few times. Um, not f that familiar with it, but uh, had a great day. Can't complain on that. Uh, also, guys, uh, Tesla, look at this. This is crazy how Tesla has been just getting pounded in this market. It's, it's come back from some of its lows, but this is another one that we talked about as a, a great short, way overvalued. Now, you know, the P&E was 1,400 at one point. Now, what's the P&E at? You know, 1,000. So that's, that's a big drop. It's still way... To me, it's still way overvalued. Um, he's also, you know, with the whole Bitcoin, let's take a look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin come way down from 58,000 now. Uh, this is right around what we sold at that time. If, if, when Bitcoin comes down to around 40, 41,000, I'll probably buy $50,000 worth again. Um, but yeah, Elon Musk, all that money he made in Bitcoin, he pretty much lost this week. So that, that's definitely not going to help his stock um, do keep going. Woofs, I'm doing well with RQHTF. I have posted about it before on the Facebook page, and so did someone else. Awesome. Keep it up, guys. And, yeah, any of you guys in our uh, Facebook page, you know, post away. That's, you know, share ideas, share um, our Patreon group, and, you know, the, the Facebook page that goes with it has done great. So keep taking advantage of that. Um, also, guys, the Weeble for the final uh, link I just posted again. Make sure you guys get those submitted over the weekend. Uh, it says... Scott, what do you think about the marijuana stocks? Do you have any idea why they tanked in the last year? Any thoughts on them going back up? So um, I, I do own some marijuana stocks, and I've been watching them closely and stuff. Um, what is uh, interesting um, is, um, you, you know, Biden, they think Biden or, you know, or the new administration is going to legalize marijuana. Um, if they do, so, and I've talked to some people who own marijuana companies and stores, and I've been an early investor in some marijuana projects and some, you know, pretty big companies. The, the big issue, like I've, I've said all along, is if you're a marijuana company, every state has a, a different rules and, and laws, and you can't uh, transport stuff interstate. So uh, one of the companies that I was involved with is called Dixie. Uh, and I'm still a large shareholder of it. Um, I'll give you guys the symbol. It changed symbols because they pretty much lost all their, their money and then merged in with another company. So it's called Bell Rock Brands Incorporated and it's DXBRF. So I'll show you guys, pull up the symbol here. So I was an early investor, I did really well with this one. 
if you guys ever watched um, the show on CNBC about the stock people, uh, the guy Trip uh, Kieber, who was on it, a good friend of mine. So this is the stock here. It's actually up today. It's uh, this thing. I, I sold a bunch of it when it was a dollar. <laughs> I wish I sold all of it when it was a dollar. Um, but it was a dollar about two years ago, right when it, it came out of the gates. And uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to sell all my stock. And then it was ninety cents, and I said, "Oh, it's going to bounce back up." They had a they had a big announcement last year where it kind of bounced up in here to seventies uh, before you know fully tanked off um, with Arizona Tea Company to do some branding because you're now you're seeing a lot of brands you know doing uh, branding with marijuana or the, the THC company you know loses money. Um, it, 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 I, I think it has potential. I, I think at 14, put it this way, I own so much of it, I don't need to average down. I actually am into the my stock probably for around 20 cents a share um, because like I said, I was an early investor. I got paid out some profits and money on it and you know the way it worked out. So one of the challenges that they had and, and all these marijuana companies faced was when they were opening up in different states, there were uh, different just, um, facilities to sell their products. They had to basically replicate in every single location the same factory so if you're ibm or not well not ibm if you're um a company that just trades in, in one location you just make your products here and you can you know like i order um my my uh jolene now she's been liking cooking so we've been getting these home chef kits well they get shipped out of texas so it was interesting last week when uh the ice storm hit and, and the weather issues down there uh they had to cancel shipping because they couldn't they had no power they couldn't get in to make the meals um, and stuff but you have one location they can ship product everywhere in the world and you only need one factory you know Her hershey they have one factory in hershey pennsylvania or wherever their factory is and they can ship chocolate all over the world um you know pepsi because of their size and how much they have they have different distributors in different states so they may have in the u.s 30 30 locations making product but they can still co-mingle or if there's a shortage in texas they can you know the pepsi plant here can ship to texas or and vice versa the problem with marijuana you can't ship over state lines so what dixie did is they uh, took their products so basically they would ship out from here uh, like a commissary kitchen, all the ingredients except the THC, um, you know, to put in to the marijuana um, and they would ship it out and, and still, but it was still, they had to set up these facilities and every time they set up a new facility, it cost millions of dollars. And if you have to replicate that in 50 states, it's just very costly. And, you know, you don't know how your sales are going to be, but you have to build the same facility everywhere. So it's, it's a lot of work and stuff. Uh, also banking laws still with marijuana or pain, you know, the government, the government doesn't technically acknowledge it as a legal business, but they acknowledge it as a business who needs to pay taxes. The states love it because, you know, they are charging these marijuanas, you know, 18 to 25 percent premiums for sales tax or, you know, whatever the state and city taxes are. So it's, it's a great revenue boost. And it's also, you know, it's employing a lot of people. Back to the whole thing is so uh, people are looking for a banking. So people are still bringing all their cash, you know, down to pay their taxes. It's a huge cash business. You know, imagine owning a store and you do twenty, thirty thousand dollars a day in sales, all in cash, and then you have all that cash to deal with and take care of. You risk robbery. I mean, so if we can get a national banking law passed for marijuana, well, what if we can just say that say it's, hey, it's legal. Now one then and you'll see some consol more consolidation. So a lot of this was on plays on consolidation or you know bigger stuff in the future because here, here's the thing: um, somebody like Philip Morris who has how many billions of dollars sitting on the sideline will come in and say, you know what, all these little marijuana companies, you know, they, they've done terrific. We love you all, and they buy them all up. They put them all together. Um, you know, they could, you know, or, or and somebody else too, not just them, but they, you know, they've been identified as somebody who would be a, a good partner interested in doing that, but then you could have a national thing. So I, you know, it's, it's like everything else. Everyone gets on that train and says, Hey, do this, do that. This looks good. Everybody ran them. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, it just, <laughs> everybody forgot about it. You know, it's, it, it was the hot thing on Reddit that week. Now it's not it, also interesting today. I don't know if you guys saw this about the OTC. I was going to talk about this on uh, Sunday's show. The OTC today, uh, or not the OTC, the SEC today shut down 15 OTC stocks or suspended them for 10 days of trading. So um, you, you have to look at, the, you know, also that's going to be something that's very concerning. And that also could hurt the OTC market going forward on some stuff. But um, yeah, you just need to you know look at that. And we're going to talk about that on Sunday's show because it, it's a pretty serious issue. And I, I, right when that came out, I saw some of the OTC stocks come down. 
And we're also going to talk about, you know, now the OT, uh, SEC is looking at these chat rooms and different stuff. What if they shut down GameStop tomorrow? What if, you know, what if they say, you know what, we saw GameStop in a chat room and you guys are spreading false information, which is basically what happened. And I told everyone, what did I tell you guys yesterday? This GameStop, the Gamma Squeeze and all this BS about $800 was just that BS. You know, sometimes you got to think about, you know, stuff um, outside the box, you know, and, and you know, and do different things you normally wouldn't do, but you got to have some intelligence. Why is GameStop, you know, worth a hundred and eighty, hundred eighty dollars again yesterday? I mean, I, like I said, I feel bad for whoever bought this thing yesterday and got hammered again. I mean, even today, who bought it at one forty two? These market makers, they, they they know they know how this stuff works now. This company is a, a dud; it's losing money. You know, this guy, you know, and now, you know, they're investigating this whole tweet of the ice cream cone and a frog. I don't even, you know, nobody even knows what that means. You know, um, I'm going to, you know, I may tweet tomorrow a Big Mac and a, and a milkshake, you know. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> like, like I said, it's very interesting. You have all these things, but you have to, you have to be very careful when you're planting these and you're going to get hurt. Um you know, if you don't know what's going on, you're going to get hurt like no other. You don't want, even if it's only one share of stock, I, you know, I was kind of saying, I thought it was a joke, you know, oh, well, they're only letting you buy one share of stock. Well, if, you know, a million people buy one share of stock. That's a lot of people. And it's going to run a stock. You also, after hours and uh, pre-market and after hours, there's no options trading, which affects the stocks heavily. But at the end of the day, still, if a million people bought this thing yesterday at $150 or higher, and now it's at 98 bucks, that's a million people who lost 50% of their money, you know, 50 bucks. Now, yeah, honestly, if I bought one share of stock and lost 50 bucks, it's not going to affect me. But, you know, if you make $15 an hour and this is you're just getting into stock trading and you just found out about this and, you know, your buddy's, oh, everyone's buying GameStop. Elon Musk tweeted it. The other guy tweeted an ice cream cone with a frog. You know what that means. I have no clue what it means. But he did it. He tweeted an ice cream cone and a frog. Let's buy, buy, buy. <laughs> you know, and it's funny. Like, it, I mean, it, it's like a joke. It's like it's like a circus act. There's no, um, there's just no intelligence behind this. Um, like I said, um, so definitely be um, <coughs> interesting how all this stuff ends up. Um, but uh, it's, it's going to be interesting. Like I said, very interesting. I don't know. The frog and the ice cream cone. To me, that takes the cake. But uh, hey, guys, this Sunday we're going to discuss uh, the SEC and what they're doing and stuff. I hope um, everyone had a great week. Uh, unfortunately, we had a down week. Um, just recap where we're at. Uh, but we had a, a good day today. We had a, a good update. So coming back strong, 233000 Still up for the year, $1.3 million. So still a great return. Over 27% up for the year, 28% somewhere in there. Or 20, yeah, 27, I don't know, around there. So I'm not, I'm not complaining. The first two months of the year out of the way, um, you know, you're going to have some ups and downs and stuff. So part of life. But you know what? We're still in the profits. And uh, you know what? Like I said, you got to be cool, collective, relaxed. You can't get too crazy um, when you have down days or down weeks. Uh, it's part of it's part of the roadmap. You guys, how many down times have you guys seen? You know, at one point we launched, and we were below our five million dollars even. So I'd much, you know. And then when we got to that six million, we had a hard time staying above it. So at least we've maintained that, and it's the same thing. We we seem to hit these highs, and we bounce back down, and we come back. So like I said, I have lots of confidence. We're not going anywhere. Uh, we're gonna hedge hedge our bets. We'll make some good trades this week. Um, so stuff looks good, but just to recap up 233,000, uh, the main plays today was the CCIB hedge on the $40 calls, uh, picked up $60,000 on that. Uh, also we averaged down on, um, uh, um, alternate systems, a uh, hundred thousand more shares to average down. And then our new one, <coughs> excuse me, our new one, life clips, uh, have a little profit there. That one was up a lot higher. So um, at one point today, I, I tried to sell it, but it looks you know pretty good. At least we're up on it. So a new, new one from the research team in Kenny. So thank you guys for that one. I just once again posted the Weeble Challenge link. So if you guys could please get us your final results in the Weeble Challenge the next Wednesday or Thursday, we'll announce the winners when we're back from Vegas. Monday and Tuesday, I am on the road again. I'll be in Las Vegas. Uh, 
So it'll be a road show from the penthouse at the Cosmo again. That's where we seem to have really good luck at the penthouse at the Cosmo. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll, that our luck will continue on Monday, and we'll see CCIB up another two, three points. So hopefully, keep it going. Um, but hey, guys, thank you so much. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you click on that subscribe button. If you haven't followed me on Facebook, make sure you follow me on Facebook. Uh, depending on where you're watching it, please let everyone know about us. Tell your friends. Tell your neighbors. Big shout out to all my Patreon members. Thank you so much. Remember, all the trades I make, these are uh, for entertainment purposes. This is just what I'm trading. This show is for entertainment purposes. <laughs> Not my trades are for entertainment. <laughs> I may be entertaining to watch trade now. But uh, hey, guys, be careful. Play the market safe. Uh, have a terrific weekend. I'll see you guys all Sunday, 5 o'clock, Mountain Standard Time. Don't be late. Boom.